It's not about, I told you, it's not just about shouting. How are you praying? Where do you stand? Some people will finish praying like, I told you I met the girl, I was shocked. I was shocked. She had prayer book from one church, I went to the church. Prayer book, midnight, to wake up, to be do. I met her soon, Pastor, how did you meet her? Somebody took me to her. She needed ministry. Ba, 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 ba. Midnight prayer. They had just specific days in the week that she goes to start the Yaba for prostitution. She had the baby. The day I heard it, I comforted I said, but you go to church, you have prayer books. What's the problem? Ah, she thought, ah, no, no, no. She, ah, that is, God knows why she's doing it. She was interceding from the depth of her soul to get customers. Not that interceding that she does she feels she's right. If you hear prayer, you don't have stamina in prayer. When that girl begins to pray, if I mention the church, you will run. They have prayer book. But she services men and asks God to bless it. What I'm telling you is that prayer is not the matter. Nigerians can pray. It's praying correctly. This will change your prayer life. Just begin to ask, you are dealing with this person, am I treating people right? I'm not saying you should be stupid. I've tried to balance it. Am I treating people right? Woman, go home and evaluate the way you relate to your husband, you relate with him as a king. Man, go home and find, ask yourself, do you treat your wife like you would treat your flesh? Some of you call other people's children good names, but there's no name your children has not heard from your mouth. Treat people just and equal as human beings. Can I announce you, your gateway is a human being. Huh? That last mile official that comes to take your whispering is human. Can I shock you? Some of them have families. Somebody calls them daddy. Somebody calls her mommy. And just lead to prayer that you will pray. God will honor it. The Bible calls the church the pillar. The ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Mark 11. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. So everybody go to Mark 11, 23. We're going to read it together. Very important to your prayer life. We'll listen to this one. It will change the game of your prayer. I know you know Mark 11, so don't, don't tune off. Let's read 24. Two, three, go. Therefore... Now, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So, whenever you pray, there's something you must do. You must believe that you receive it, not that you will receive it. It's a different thing. You see, 80% of our prayer life is that God will do it. And that is not New Testament. New Testament is that God has done it. And if God has done it, I have received it. So when you pray, this is apostolic counsel, believe that you receive it, not you will receive it. You will not receive the job after you pray. You have received the job. It's a game changer. That's why 2 Peter says, by his stripes you were healed, is received. Not you will be. Pastor, does it matter? It matters. In real Bible study and interpretation, you must understand your tenses. So, whatever you are praying for right now, for this three-day fast, if you had a prayer point, let me see your hand. Huh? Sitting here now, I want to ask you the question. If I, if I didn't say this one, if I asked you, do you believe God will do it? All of you would have said yes. Do you believe that what you prayed for, God will give it to you? You will say yes. But that is not correct. You know why? If, Ladi, if you go to your mom, 
and you ask, tell me the truth, oh. I want to ask you two questions. And you ask your mom for 20,000 naira. Maybe you don't have cash. If you say no, tell me the truth. We should give it to you. The relationship you have with your mom now. If you ask her for 20, however you say it in your river, that you need 20K, we should give it to you. Are you sure you will leave that place with the money? You need 20K urgently. First of all, does your mother have the capacity to give you 20,000 naira? Is this something she has to pray to God for? She doesn't have to pray to God for it, but she can give it to you. So if you ask your mom, are you sure and persuaded that you're going to leave that place with 20,000, 20, not 29? Yeah? Are you sure? So, fast forward. If you go to your husband, tell me the truth. And you ask your husband for 50,000 naira that you need it now. Are you sure you will get it there? Or you may get it over time later. Hmm? Your husband will give it to you there. Somebody give Jesus praise. I say somebody give Jesus praise. Give him praise. <laughs> so the husband will give you 50k there. Hmm? So when you leave that place, would you still be waiting after asking your husband? For 50,000 naira, if he has given you 50,000 naira. So, this is the third question. I'll give you two more questions. You have two brothers. If you go to the last one, the youngest one, and ask him for 20K now, will he give it to you now? The yes was, will he give it to you now? He will give it to you if he has. So that one may not have the capacity then. Huh? So every time you say you will receive from God, there are two question marks you've put on him. Capacity and willingness. You are saying that she said that her youngest brother, she said her husband, her husband will give her because the husband has 50,000. Is it possible that your husband doesn't have 50,000? Tell me the truth. Hmm? No, feel free. Talk to me. There's nothing you can do to you. I'm the one asking you. Do you believe that there are times where your husband is broke, he doesn't have 50K? You believe that? But do you believe even if he doesn't have 50K, he can get 50K? Yeah. So that's what you were trying to tell me quietly, that he can get it even if he doesn't have it. So capacity for your husband is handled. He can produce 50,000 iron. Can your mom produce 20,000 iron even if she doesn't have By her relationships. Okay? But this third guy, you just said now, that if he has. Okay? So, you can leave that place after that request and call your brother XYZ will give me 20,000 naira. Huh? It simply means that he doesn't he doesn't have at the moment. So the question is, if God has it, why will you go to him and ask it and he will give you later? It's a thinking that we have to crush in the body of Christ. Why should God give to you now what you can give you. The only reason why he will give it to you later is if you have not grown to it. Because from the parable of the prodigal son, what we see is that there are things that if God... Let me tell you the greater lesson we miss from that story. There are things that if God gives you now, he has finished you. We often get all the revelation in that text, but we miss this one. There are some prayers that if Jesus answers now, that's what the parable is telling you. As the father... Sure, you know he asked before time. But the father gave him. So if the father gives you some things, we will look for you. But outside that, if your timing is right, your maturity is right, there's no reason God is going to postpone what he has to give to you. He has it. That's what I'm saying. Her husband has it. Her mother has it. But she said her brother may not have it. Don't allow him to see this teaching. You know. Okay? <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? There's wisdom in the pastoral ministry. That's why I didn't call anybody. I said X, Y, Z. So you believe that you have it. So if you pray for a job, you have it. And there's something that you have it does to your brain. Pastor, is a lie. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you how. If you have... Oh, God. How many of, how many of you have got... Don't put the camera. If you have gotten a one millionaire alert, credit to your account before. I 
and don't want to say show your hand uh, don't worry let me just teach when you had money inside your account did your feeling and thinking change ah can i talk to some real people when it was 0 0.7 kobo you know the bank balance that is you know is never zero 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 if it's zero 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 there's a problem we need ministry on that one there must be something i hear what i'm saying at this two percent or two naira on your two kobo on you as investment or profit you know what i'm saying if it's a savings account the moment it is four zero 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 that's how much 400 four zero 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 that's 400 k do you know the possibilities you have change hmm? where you walk into changes let me tell you the one that shocks you it has happened to me and happens to all of us some problems show up people are shouting and you don't know why they're shouting that is the beautiful thing may god prosper you because it's not just it's beyond the money it's the liberty to do life the rebuke of the spirit of fear that comes with prosperity let me tell you every man that they tell the gas cylinder has finished and he begins to shout apart from me i rake when they don't manage it well no you manage it well what do you mean by that <laughs> All those four bonus cannot be on at the same time. Shot two down. If you're not using it. When you're boiling water, stand there. When he boils you off it. <laughs> All of you just be able like you don't do it. It's okay. I'm fine. I know how God helps me. I you, you manage it. But it's not like I don't have the money to replace it. But when the money is not there to replace it, there's a fear that comes to your heart when you hear that the gas has finished if you're a family man. Only family men understand what I'm saying. But when you know there's little change to cause somebody to bring another cylinder, it dissolves the fear. So when you believe you receive, there's a way it affects you, even in your body and in your emotions. So somebody that has received a job, there's a way they think. Nepa B will not make them, their heart caught when they see the bill. You know why? You know at the end of the month you'll be paid. Sure, you get what I'm saying? There's a way you think when you know you have. Some of you, let me tell you the gospel truth. Eh? You don't have money when the bills come up, but you know 30 years you will have money. So you know what your job really does to you? Say you know, God forbid, let me know. Some people, not you, have hoped that 30 years they will pay the bills and 30 years there was no more company. But what kept you at peace until 30 years? The mindset, the security of a job. And you get what I'm saying? When you believe you have received, there's a way it conditions your mind. That's why you have to believe you have received so that you can begin to behave like you have received. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. So that's one. So two points, and then we'll close. Mark 11, forgiveness and your prayer life. We we'll deal with that and then we we'll close. Forgiveness and your prayer life. Okay, so you know the Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three, you shall have it. Sure, you know it's not instant. Huh? Shall. Define shall for me. Future occurrence, IBK said. Is that correct? You shall have it. Excuse me, there's something I'm looking for. Um, I want to say something about a woman's pregnancy, how it works. Um, why is a woman pregnant and um, she's confident that she will be delivered of her baby? Huh? What keeps a woman going, better put? Spitting, sleeping. Uh, where do women sleep when they're pregnant? Their sides. Help me. Is it their sides? Ah, people have different sleeping positions. Or it differs from person to person. Sides. Nobody sleeps the back. Why? Is it medical advice or you won't be comfortable? 
you won't be comfortable and then medically excuse me there's something i am looking for just hold up for me all right mm -hmm. so let's go to mark eleven twenty four quickly Let's begin from 25. Mark 11, 25. It's my face tall. Okay. Mark 11, 25. After this, I'm going to be ministering to people. So when a woman is pregnant, one month she's spitting, she's not sleeping well, she's having cravings. I saw a lady, she had cravings. She told the husband to buy beans are going beans and as he bought their going beans she came she inhaled it she said she doesn't want to eat beans again she wants um french fries so one time i was traveling to my pastor's church and i waited at kfc and then she just when me said he wants to be that thank god that this place is there that the wife told him then she was pregnant that the wife told him to buy what did she tell you to buy she was craving for something you can't remember. God bless you. So she was craving for something. And he had to buy it there. So I asked later if he remembers. Just Pastor check. have you reached home? Whilst I was on my job, I hope she got the thing to you. She said, by the time I got there, she didn't want to eat it anymore. So you, uh, pregnant woman, you understand what I'm saying? So all this discomfort, what gives you hope? What gives you the capacity to go through it? Huh? You don't know what gives you capacity to go. Let me ask you, pregnant woman, what gives you capacity to go through all that thing? The baby. You know it's coming. Yeah? So that's what happens to you. Every time you believe that you have received, it will change your system. You know you're going to have it. So you can go through the things you need to go through. The reason why some Christians don't go through things is because they don't believe that they are going to have what they say and have what they are praying about. So I'll share two things and we'll close. And when ye stand praying, forgive. Hmm. Ye, if ye have ought against any. Now, there are two things in the Bible. In Matthew, he says, when somebody has ought against you. In Mark, he says, if you have ought against somebody. Is that correct? And if ye have ought against somebody. So what? Listen. Your offering and your prayer are two powerful weapons. Some of you don't know that your offering is worship. When you come to church, you give offering, you give tithe, you sow sacrificial seed. Something can affect it. I will show you, but let's f f face this one first. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought. Not if somebody has ought for it. Now, if I'm praying and somebody has ought against me, my prayer will work. How do you know, Pastor? I'm standing on the authority of Scripture. But if I'm praying and I, I have ought to someone, it will affect my prayer life. See what it says. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. So when you are praying, you must make sure that you don't have beef for anybody in your heart. I'm not saying that you are sleeping in everybody's house. You know what I mean, sleeping. I don't mean sexual. As in, you're friendly with everybody. I'm talking about your heart. If you are praying, discover that, okay, for instance, uh, it's, it's not happening. You know? I'm using two friends. Tolu is serving in church, and she begins to pray there. I'm leading prayer. And as she looks at uh, peace, she has ought, and she's cutting her eye, and she's praying the spirit. That prayer is not going anywhere. It's going to bounce around there. You understand that? Because she has ought. Now, peace. Her own prayer will be very effective if she doesn't have ought. But she will not have an effective prayer life because she has ought. So when it comes to prayer, you know why, you know why it has to be like that? Because in prayer, you have to search yourself to have results. Do I have issues with anybody in my heart? Am I angry at someone? And let me tell you the gospel truth. Don't say, no, no, no. It's very easy to get offended in a world like this. You cannot be praying and that your uncle that said something to you 14 years ago. You still have him in your heart. That's why your prayer is 14 years and there's no answer. That's what the Bible says. So let's go to Matthew now. Let's see the one for offering and I'll close. Matthew 5.24 Matthew 5.24 
23. Good. Let us read together. So, what's the, what will stop your prayer life? If you have ought. Not if somebody has ought. Did you get that explanation? You can have ought against me if I pray. It's not, it's not my business. Huh? But the only way that will be my business is if I'm praying for your healing. Did you get that? If IBK has ought towards me, she has issues in her heart towards me, eh? and I'm praying, my prayer will be answered. Sure you get. But if, if I am praying for IBK's healing, and she has ought, you know that that one won't work, according to love the anointing. Should you get that? But apart from ministering to people, if somebody has issues with you, your prayer life will be working. But if you have issues with people, your prayer life won't be working. Now let's come to your offering. Okay? It says, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and you remember that thy brother. Can you see that this is technical? Your bro the first one is you have issues with somebody. It will affect you. This next one is your brother. Don't say, hey, pastor, but how do I know people have issues with me? Okay, that's a very good question. Now, the Bible is telling you about, it says, if and you know, you must know. So, the one that you don't know, you are free. You get that? Now, how many of you know that somebody have, do you know why people have fought against you? Don't lie. Can I see a hand? Don't lie. You know. You know. The one that you don't know, that's why it's not good to know many things. My brother, don't tell me, say, get what I will don't tell me, don't come up and tell me, don't go and hook my prayer life by giving life. <laughs> because the more I know, the more I have to be settling it before I give my seed. That's why many offerings don't work. So you know that somebody has an issue with you. Jesus, is this important? When you get to heaven, I'll give it him. That's what he said. He said, before you bring your gift to the altar, this is offering in church, not giving to arms. Before you give offering in church, and you remember... You remember. So if you don't remember, it means you are free. You remember that your brother has issues with you. It says you should drop your gift. How did he say? Next verse. Leave your gift at the altar. Now, let me help you. He didn't say don't give again. Stingy people hear that one now. This is not a rema for you. Say, Father, Pastor, I have unforgiveness, so I'm not going to tithe in six months until this my brother has <laughs> until this my brother has forgiven me. No, that's not what he says. He says you leave your gift at the altar. <laughs> All right? You will go and meet your friend and say, Ore, kilo shere. What happened? I discovered that you've been cold towards me and all of this. Is it because of that thing that happened? Anyway, so this is what it is. And Paul, Paul explained that. He said, when you apologize to the person, the person does not agree. Go and bring two elders in church. All right? And you tell the person that, see, 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 this person, and the person still does agree, you are free. So every time I study this thing, I take, I, I practice personal Christianity first before pastoral ministry. Hmm? I ask myself, so, this is why I don't want to know too many people. It's Rama for her. But it's good though, I'm telling you. You know what I mean by know too many people? I can have too many people around, but I don't want to be personally involved with too many people because offenses must come. That means I have to go and be sorting things now before my offering will work. I don't like all those kind of wala. I want to be able to sow my seeds and the heavens give rain to them. So what I'm saying is that if you're a very relational person like Pascaline, Before you give your offering, you should be checking. <laughs> you should be checking. Uh, this usher. Uh, Madam, you didn't greet me when I greeted you. She, we're okay because I want to go cast my seed. Praise God. And all of that. So these are the two things you must work out for your prayer life and your giving life to work. So let's take the prayer life again. The Bible says, if, what will affect your prayer life? If you have ought against someone. Now, the person must not just be a friend. It, it may not be a colleague alone. It can be a sibling. Amen sibling it can be give me examples let's bring the word home as we close who are the people that can that you can have ought against colleagues, colleagues in the office staff 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 they can annoy you spouse <laughs> first guy like this guy like, <laughs> the husband is looking at Beatrice's glasses <laughs> don't worry welcome to the marriage club <laughs> Pascal I said spouse 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 not if he out or that if you have ought. So the spouse is you you are talking about. You know what I'm <laughs> it is offering that you look at him. It is prayer you look at you. Praise God. If you have ought. So Pastor I said spouse. Which other one please? She thought she was hooking him. She thought she was hooking herself. <laughs> Which one again? Huh? Oh, did I hear somebody whispering in their mind? So couples have issues. They do. 
and they resolve it and that's why the love gets with her. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? That's why there's no marriage in heaven because we won't be solving conflicts in heaven. That's the truth. There's no marriage in heaven. There's only one marriage in heaven. The church getting married to Jesus. For seven years we'll be chowing and feasting. My God. You don't want to miss it. Oh, you don't know that. The marriage supper land for seven years. Why folks will be get, going through some things here. We'll be there. Jesus Christ. Some of you have one day for wedding reception. You think, you, you think you're living the life. Amen. You want to ask a question after, after I finish? But I like that attitude. It's a word feast. Okay. So, spouse. Ha ha. Church member. How many of you agree? Wave your head. If you believe that sometimes you can have ought towards church members. The Bible teaches us how to handle that thing. Sure, you know it's not correct for a Christian to take another Christian to court. We don't want to face those things in the body of Christ. We have left apostolic Christianity. Now, but if you don't respond, you don't misbehave, they take you to court. I'm, I'm, always, I'm always for balance. You can't defraud people. That's why pastor always says, before you have a financial dealing with anybody, tell pastor. People will say, no, 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 no. I know that. They will hook you. You say, pastor, this guy did this to me. He say, eh. Ah. Do? Do? Eh. Five million. And he's born again. Is your, is your, do, do. My pastor told the lady, "What? Be careful about that marriage. That marriage is not of God." My pastor says it's sharp. Me, I will look for a pastoral way to, so it doesn't look like I'm controlling your life. But at the end of the day, I discovered that you just have to do what you have to do. Let, just do the right thing. Let them say whatever they want to say. So before God, you are free. This wedding is not correct. This wedding is not correct. She said, no. She said, no. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. No woman, because they are called helper and the Holy Spirit is calling helper, they think they are the Holy Spirit. Have you observed that? The woman is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a helper. So they feel they can marry the wrong man and help him become right. They feel that they are the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because there's a similarity between their ministries. You think, I will change him. You are not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit you are a help me. The Holy Spirit is the helper. The helper. It's different. You know, you are doing like that, doing like that, doing like that. So, you are, you, so one day the man beat Shege. Shege! That, have you seen slab that you, you see you see celestial beings in the terrestrial atmosphere? You are looking like this and you are seeing beings. <laughs> Not B-E-A-N-S-O. B-E-I-N-G apostrophe yes if you please. Beings. So that's the right correct spelling. So that's the right spelling. When I spell beans, all of you get quiet. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so my pastor said, now you lay your hands on that place now. Father, let the pain go down. <laughs> she was disappointed and heartbroken. He even said it yesterday. yesterday. He said, if I teach on healing, you don't take it seriously because you are not sick. You stay in the hospital, you say, Pastor, come. I say, I will drive, I will come and meet you, minister to you in the hospital if I have to minister to you, but I have to go home and eat. Because you determine how I pastor you. So he just told you, maybe the two, the woman thought that pastor would say, oh yeah, pastor call Ajay. Go there and deal with that man. He said, put your hands now on that point of contact. Lay your hands there. <laughs> Father in Jesus, let the prayer, let the pay reduce. <laughs> it has to reduce because the next one is coming. It's just the fact of life. Amen. So those are examples of people that um, you can have ought towards. Is that okay? Then when you have offering, if somebody has ought towards you, go and sort it out so that your offering can work. Amen? Amen. Has anybody had an example before? Somebody who had ought with you. Has this happened to you before? Where you had to drop your offering at the altar. Maybe it was your father. How many of you know you can have issues with your father and your mother? Huh? Can you? You need to get to the point, I've closed, where you look at people. Don't do this if you are not sound in the spirit and you know what is in their heart. You know they have ought towards you, but they don't show it in the face. Have you been there? You've not been there? Uh, it's a supernatural place, but be careful so you don't go into the gift of suspicion. I have looked at people 
And I said, this one won't be in church again the next two weeks. And it happened. One day, my keyboard this was in church. Great guy. He still honors me and respects him. And I, I love him. I looked at him. We were in church. I was teaching. As I was teaching, I saw. I saw him. People were there. People sitting beside me didn't know. The choir didn't even know. I knew that was his last day in church. And he sent me a text. He said, sir, I want to go to a church that is paying me. I said, I know. I saw it in you. You can tell when somebody is repelling your grace. You can tell. And you need that discernment in the last days. For, for instance, all of you here now, I can tell the person that is off. The person is shaking here, but I can tell you that this one is telling me to get out of here and release them. I can tell you now. Name and color of shirt, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. This work. That's why the first thing he told the man of God is be thou courageous. If you don't have courage, you leave this work. Abike is not you. Don't praise God. <laughs> I know you like my teaching. You like my teaching. Praise God. Amen. So get, I'm giving you that one as a gift. You just know. You know, God saw Cain and he asked him a question. Why has your countenance fallen? You need to, it's not, be careful though, don't go start suspecting people. But you just know that this person's heart is not right with you, but the person is smiling with you. The Bible says, eat and drink, he said, but his heart is not with you. For as a man thinketh. That's the scripture that precedes that one. As a man thinketh in his heart. But his heart is not with you, but as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If he's not with you, so is he. If he's not with you in the heart, so is he. In the pastoral office, if you are really called to be a pastor, you will have the equipment. There's a lady in this church, I know that I said in six months, this girl won't be here. I passed out her from death in my heart. It was, I, was, I was inaccurate with the timing. It was two months. I can tell you when somebody's heart is not with me. The person can be with me. Let me say, may God give you the grace to know who is not with you that is with you physically. Amen. Their heart is not right. Let me tell you the problem of marriages. Many marriages. Many people married people that they were supposed to say hi to and pass. Take this one as a gift. Many people married people that they were supposed to. God brought them together to just say, hello, hello, what's your name? Well, I work with FEMB and go. Pew. But well, they come there. Many people married people that they were supposed to just wave and pass. It's called waka pass. But they camped with them. Because there was no discernment to know who is who. The correct discernment of people. Or else they begin to affect your prayer life and your giving life. Can you see why it's important? Has anybody understood this, enjoyed this gift of discernment before? Has it happened to you before? You walk into a school, you want to enroll your child. Everything is nice. But you look at somebody as at the helm of affair there. And something is not right. You know if you take your child here to be wala. And people are wondering, why, 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 why? Like they told that my daughter, your yeah, perfection is perfection. What? You can't give me a house from the bathroom to the kitchen. Oh, by the way, I remember, I told you there was one more thing that I didn't remember. You can't remember that. Pumping machine is in the sitting room for the entire compound. On the ground. It's on the ground. <laughs> even, even all of you are, even though you live in Eko, you are saying, ah, ah. <laughs> even though you live in Eko, you are saying, ah, ah, kilo shele. Pumping machine in the sitting room. What kind of spiritual, which, which, what, what is the perfection? That is abnormality that has become normal. I rebuked it. If I, I told her, I said, you shouldn't be calling me for this kind of house. I'm upset. Don't call me. That's rubbish. When you get a house to call me, that's nonsense. When public machine spoil, they call me to your pardon. I break the ground. <laughs> yeah? I come to your house, you bring food from me from toilet. Keep living where you are until, until Jerusalem shows up. Keep living where. <laughs> when I was looking for a house, there's nothing. One called, I think, told Jesse Pelu me that. He called him that we just have to compromise. Can you remember? I was looking for a house. I saw some place. I said, I can't say it. He said, we just have to compromise and, you know, just, just a job. I said, that is a criminal talking. If it's your money, can you even afford one third of that thing? Have you discovered they can't afford the houses and they won't live in the houses they are showing you? I'm paying. You say I should. Uh, uh, which which can. Uh, with four children, I will be adjusting to what? 
with popping machine inside the sitting room. Even this place I went to, they 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 get, they left the what do you people do? People call this thing that people pass through the ceiling. That's what they call them in architecture. Mark what? Manhole. Okay. They put it in my flat. So one day they just called, they said they want to my my light was tweaking. So I'd already made mention of it. So okay. So the guy, I just covered that. The guy just called me, uh, Pastor, please open your door. The electrician is there. And he disappeared. I didn't see him again. So when I opened, I told the guy I wanted to fix my light. He said he wants to do somebody else's light. I gave them a call. Never. One, in your life, enter my flat by deception. Number two, you don't fix people's flats for my flat. The moment I confronted that foolishness, they did one at the staircase. Now, some of you are too weak. That's why you even allow the devil to run through your life. If I kept quiet, I would just be in church or be somewhere. They would say, knock on my door, enter my, where my wife is there, my children, and say they want to go and fix somebody's house. I said, what kind of arrangement is that one? You close this one. They open one there. I said, never. I called him. I said, you did that and you ran away because he you know it's wrong. I thought the guy was coming to you. He didn't, he didn't fix my life too. Came to fix somebody else's light and open um, my, what, what, say he wants to go. So anything that wants to, you want to fix, you fill my flat. Call it being a perfectionist, being normal. Praise God. So you search your spirit, you don't take such houses, see? Because in those kind of houses, your prayer won't be answered because you'll be offended. <laughs> you'll be angry. You're, nobody, God, nobody, your prayer, if I, you'll be able to pray. <laughs> Praise God. Stand to your feet. Amen. Some of you are offended at me for teaching long when I warned you that it's camp meeting. Stand to your feet. Don't be offended. Somebody begin to talk to the Lord. Ask that this word would germinate in your life. Whatever it is that you heard corporately that was Rema, personally that was Rema to you, that God will speak to you. God will speak to you. God will speak to you the words that you should take home as your word. That's what I mean by God will speak to you. You will come back into this house for some of you from tomorrow morning with a testimony. Is anybody talking to the Lord? Remember, after you have prayed, your utterance matters. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. A sound of prosperity is coming to this house. In the next few months, God has begun to speak by, on my heart, into my heart about and along those lines. But I want to prophesy that a sound of prosperity is coming to this house. Amen. You see, in these times that people are complaining, it will be the times you will have abundance. Amen. People are expecting hunger. People are expecting anarchy, shortages. Because of the shortcomings of the policies of the nation when it comes to economy and all of that. But for you, your case will be different. Amen. For you and yours, your case will be different. Amen. I speak this experience over your life. In the coming days, you'll be exempted from lack. Amen. You'll be exempted from want. Amen. You won't struggle to pay your bills. Amen. You won't struggle to pay your house rent. Amen. You won't struggle to feed. You won't struggle to send the kids to good schools. Amen. This year is your year of prosperity. Amen. Receive financial miracles. Amen. Everyone who is at the, uh, at the threshold of lack, and uh, you have been arrested by the spirit of lack and want, Today, you are free from it. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Give Jesus a hand clap of praise. you to grow up so that he can face weightier matters of his kingdom agenda the greatest problem with the church is babies in the church they never grow you can't be in church for four years in a proper assembly and you are not growing the things that used to upset you still upset you it is very important that you understand that christianity is not about title it's about followership of jesus christ listen to this carefully was mary a disciple of jesus okay so mrs vera said was a disciple of jesus but not among the 12. how do you know she was a disciple what's the definition of a disciple she followed him one she learned 
at his feet but she was not an official disciple now this also tells you if you want to use scripture to interpret scripture that in the church of jesus christ there are officers in the kingdom not everybody is the same in christianity you don't need a title you just need a heart for jesus who told you it's only a pastor it's only when they ordain you pastor in church then you will not take your prayer life seriously have you observed there's something we do in the body of christ that is wrong if you have a sibling in school or at home that is always praying the next thing people call him is what pastor he's wrong why not believer why is it that when somebody is taking his spiritual life seriously we think he's an officer in the kingdom but yet god called somebody and chose to appear to somebody who he did not call into a kingdom or an apostolic office and told that to go and tell the officers where he will meet them so mary here tells us that i can follow jesus without a title and he will appear to me he will give me secrets he will show me things to come 